listening to Earth Noise, the podcast that uses music as a vessel to travel through time and space, hosted by me, Kelsey Georgeson. On this show, we will explore our collective experience by listening to a variety of music and finding a common thread. This podcast was recorded on the traditional land of the Kickapoo people. I also want to acknowledge that all American music has been influenced by the African diaspora. In this audio space, we aim to elevate the voices of Black and Indigenous people and their music. In this episode, you're going to hear a little bit from Olivia Komachi, also known as Liv the Artist. Um, Liv is amazing, and I found Liv online playing these beautiful pieces processing grief and loss and um, translating these big feelings into some really light and moving passages on the guitar. And, and I knew that I had to hear more about Liv's experience. Um, and so I'm so grateful for Liv joining me for this episode of Earth Noise today. Liv is Comanche and Oto and is a nomadic bred, multi-instrumentalist and emerging fil film composer whose vibrant music blends together elements of alternative neo-soul and indie electronic. Liv is endorsed by Keeley Electronics Guitar FX Pedal Company, is a platinum producer of Timbaland's Beat Club and a 2021 alumni of the Sundance Institute's Composer Lab. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me, Olivia. I'm so glad to have you here. Um, just yes. to get started, I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, your experience with music and um, maybe what your earliest memory as a child is of music or your early interactions with music. Yes, so thank you for having me, Kels. I'm so happy to be here having a conversation with a musician as well. I'm always down to kick it and just vibe for a minute. My earliest memory, I always go back to when I was in the third grade and I played viola in third grade. I had an awesome teacher. Her name was Miss Vincent. And Miss Vincent was super encouraging with not only keeping on point with practicing, but finding creative ways to do it. Like, for example, she would say, okay, you wanna practice, just fit it in every night. If you watch SpongeBob in between commercials back when cable was a thing, that's crazy to say that now, but back when cable was a thing, play your instrument for like 10 minutes while commercials are going and then watch your show and then play 10 minutes and watch your show. And so I remember going home really excited to practice because she was just an awesome teacher and we were learning that one song uh, I think it was like dreidel like dreidel dreidel or the spinning dreidel song and I went to my aunt's house undid my viola and I ended up practicing for it felt like three hours and as a seven-year-old or I think in the third grade you're like seven or eight as a seven-year-old or nine-year-old, I don't know how you're old, how old you are then, but being a little kid and practicing for three hours straight and just being in the flow and just, I kind of like lost track of time. And I remember having this feeling of, oh my gosh, I love getting lost in this instrument, trying to articulate what I thought and felt as hard, like, trying to describe it as a kid but all I knew is oh my gosh I really like this instrument um or I just like this feeling of putting myself into something and dedicating my time and just kind of getting lost in it and then uh yeah that's probably my earliest slash favorite memory that I that really just <laughs> made me take a step back I love that so, trance state on on like your early instrument and being so young and kind of like, oh, I'm in this flow and in the zone. And um, I think a lot of times, I don't know, when we're when we're kids or just even I, I almost more so as an adult in this modern world, we get so sucked into all of our devices or all of these other distractions that I don't, it kind of takes work to find that state, that like flow state or I'm, I'm like so consumed by this project or this idea or this 
art or whatever to just lose ourselves in it. So that's really cool that that's mm -hmm. <laughs> one of your early yeah. memories with that. And I feel like that um, kind of shows up in some of your work today and that you're building on, on an idea or I know you do a lot of work with loops and things. Um, do you feel like you still get into that zone a lot when you're working now? Yeah, every once in a while, I'll, you know, when you're in it, like in it, in it, it's like, oh, yeah, like, hey, you're back. But it's one of those things that I think can't be forced. And it's kind of gifted upon you with grace or just randomness. It's something that you just can't force. And so that's my intention when I go into music and sometimes my head is filled up with all kinds of thoughts and things I need to do and work on. But when I'm creating specifically on something that is mine or something that's new or just playing for fun, that's my intention going in is like, okay, I'm going to not try. Like I have attained the skills to know enough of what I'm doing. So I don't have to think so much and kind of meditating on nothing on trying not to think and when I'm like thinking like oh that riff was cool or oh wow I just did that or oh that sucks or you know how your brain gets in your head like just 24 8 25 8 uh and so I was just my intention is just that but not getting mad at myself if it doesn't happen because sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't most of the time it doesn't but when it does it's like okay that was dumb this is why I do what I do yeah so oh that's so fun it's kind of you're always in this pursuit of getting there but if you try to do it you won't get there <laughs> if you think too hard about yeah. it it doesn't happen sometimes that's that's totally <laughs> uh yeah yes. definitely I feel like all of us have that experience seeking the thing and it's kind of always out of reach yes. and then sometimes it Once happens you get a taste forever. it's like oh my gosh I want that forever and then it's like haunting your entire just being of wanting to get back to that state almost to a fault where it's like okay I'm stressing myself out because I'm not there it's like yeah so we can go in we can go up for hours talking about that but yes <laughs> that's awesome um, so you started out uh, playing, I'm sorry, was it viola or violin? Viola. Viola, yeah. So you started out playing viola, and I know you are a multi-instrumentalist. You play a lot of different things. So what was your journey from um, viola to where you are now? Yeah, so I remember having instruments all around the house as long as I could remember. I had piano drums, guitar. My parents were in a metal band when I was a little kid. And so instruments all around the house, they were always gone out to practice and playing shows and stuff. And sorry about that music if it's really loud, but uh, instruments around the house, I was a quiet kid. And so instead of hanging out with friends, I would always kind of choose drawing or something creative. And I don't know now that I think about it, if that was like disassociation or if that was me just really enjoying the instrument but regardless I got into everything just kind of dipped my toe into all kinds of instruments my first instrument that I started practicing on a regular basis was the viola and then I jumped to guitar when I was about 15 16 years old and then piano has always kind of been there along with cello and drums but yeah that's kind of my journey just kind of like slowly allowing myself to be interested in different instruments and picking them up and messing around with them yeah that's awesome um when did you start writing music do you feel like that was something you were kind of always doing a little bit or something that you spent more time on once you discovered one of the other instruments? Mm, that's a good question. I think that I started writing a lot of melodies when I started picking up the guitar and then the violin a little bit. The more that I got comfortable with not being so in my head with the instrument, I would kind of learn how to improv a little bit. But as far as production and lyrics and actual full-fledged songs go I'm just now kind of 
dipping into that as a I don't want to say like a complete artist because you're always growing in different directions but allowing myself to be like hey you're you have all of these tools now you have like your paint brushes and you have all the fancy paints in your canvases and now you can just like stop thinking and allow yourself to just apply and so as far as like full composed songs and stuff with lyrics and vocal I have been doing that as of recent but with melodies and stuff I've been doing that since I was playing viola and guitar probably I would say like on a regular basis when I was about 16 or 17. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I love what you were saying about uh, kind of improvisation, letting you get out of your head a little bit about playing the instruments. Because when you're learning a new instrument, there's so much of, am I doing it right? And in the process, the, even the way we interact as like a student to a teacher or you know, when you're playing in an orchestra, it's always like, am I doing it right? Am I doing it better than someone else? Am I doing it the way that I'm supposed to according to what's on the paper? But when we start writing music, I think you have to eventually let go of all that and just you're you're listening to what's happening in the moment. And um, <laughs> yeah, just like, yes. I like what I'm playing now, not am I doing it right? But does it sound like what I'm trying to um, express? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do, uh, Absolutely. do a lot of your songs start with um, improvisation or do you kind of have a melody in mind when you when you're sitting down to work on something or it's okay if you don't I feel like it's hard to talk about this process <laughs> it is it is sometimes like I allow myself to take a break from a specific instrument and then I'll go into a room with really good reverb so no matter what you play it sounds really good and crispy and it's like oh my gosh why did I ever stop playing this and so backing away for a minute and then walking into it uh with curiosity and excitement again if you if you get a little I suppose just bored of the instrument or if you're practicing non-stop and it's just like ah I'm losing my my joy to actually play this this instrument i'll take a break and then i'll jump into it and see if anything comes up uh other than that sometimes i get inspired by songs and i'll listen to a song obsessively and then i'll it'll be in my head like in my subconscious by like how many times i've listened to it and then when i do decide to jam and just have fun in a little bits of the inspiration I can kind of hear it in there so I guess I just like turn my stuff on and then usually when I'm working on a project before I do I'll warm up and then I'll see if anything comes up and if I like it I'll record it really quick and then if not I won't freak out I'll just be like okay I'm going on to my next thing that I was doing and so just anytime I can squeeze it in if something happens it does and if it doesn't then there's going to be another time where I find something that I like yeah <laughs> yeah great. so um I yeah I think that's so nice to be able to just try it out and not put pressure on yourself too like it happened or it didn't and then I'm moving on I think is important because <laughs> it does yes. I guess that goes to uh speaking a little bit about you know when you're recording for yourself versus if you're like signed on some label when it's just for you you get to write when you feel ready but if you were recording for somebody else or under someone else's kind of timeline um sometimes you don't get that flexibility that you do with your own projects yes yes it's like okay you have x amount of months to work on this it's due and you have to make this much money it's like that's pulling all of the juice out of why i do music personally so yes there's some truth to what you just said for sure yeah what um what do you feel i i feel like i'm asking all the hard questions but <laughs> if you had to answer like why I, but, do music personally um is there like one driving force for you or uh what kind of brings you back to making music again and again i feel like ultimately it's 
it's my favorite, one of my favorite ways to tap into presence and flow and understanding of life and realizing truth. And I like to do that through a music channel it through music and being able to really connect on that level. Music being a universal language, I feel like it's just my go-to personally and something that I've gravitated towards ever since I was very little and feels very natural. And a lot of people that could be cooking, that could be working out in fitness, that could be building houses. For me, it's music and I love it. So I think it's just to find that next level of understanding and frequency for myself, I suppose, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm always learning makes- different ways why I like it, but <laughs> Yeah. 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 I always think of um, music as, as the universal language. Uh, it's so interesting when I was teaching children, something, some kids don't fully have a grasp of language itself yet, whatever, you know, English language or any, any, some kids have trouble talking right away and forming words and sentences and ideas, but music is something that you can experience whether or not you're understanding it or know what you're saying or know what you're hearing. Um, you can still kind of have this full body experience singing it and moving to it Mm -hmm. um i imagine you since you said your parents were musicians that music really does feel like a language growing up with music around all the time and um just kind of (laughs) yeah yes yes absolutely yeah i always had a hard time expressing myself verbally as a kid and sometimes now i'm getting out of it i have my degrees way just to tap in and instantly connect with someone if you like the same song as someone and it's like you instantly are like on this interesting vibe where it's like okay you like the same music we should hang out or what's your spotify you know it's just kind of <laughs> like um automatically good friends so it's pretty cool it dissolves a barrier really fast if you're at like a you know whether you're just like a a song comes on or you're at a show and you run into someone else it just kind of there's one less thing that you have to break through to feel like you're getting to know them which is awesome yeah um you said that you use music as a way uh to just kind of maybe learn about the world or or understand life um i noticed that a few of your recent songs i don't know how recent i watched your um uh city hall performance uh before the same yeah. I was <laughs> having a listen and I know that you've written a few pieces about um people you've lost recently and I was wondering if you ha- have any thoughts on using music to navigate grief or loss yeah I love that I think whenever I mean nowadays right now everyone is losing someone whether it's a, you have a friend who lost someone very close to them vice versa I feel like uh, so far I have had probably like three or four people that are very close to me that have passed away, whether it's because of COVID or if it's because of some other like mental things going on because of all the chaos right now. I feel like a way, I've, I've never actually gotten to express this before. It's really cool that you're asking this question I feel like it's a way for me to accept that, hmm, I don't know, I have to think about it a little more to have like a cooler answer, but I feel like I pick up a guitar whenever my grandpa, my Coco passed away, that was, uh, that hit home for a lot of my family. And there was something telling me just to pick up my guitar and uh, see him on, he's on to see V was creator and um, leaving this reality that we're in. And it's a good way for me to serve um, just kind of pay tribute to what he's taught me 
and showed me in this lifetime and uh he had a lot of great advice and just encapsulating his whole aura and who he was as my Thoko through music and being able to put that in a, a way to where I can't really describe it with words. It's better if I just play this song or if it's better if I just express it through music, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'd have to, yeah, trying to channel it into a way where it's like, this is how I see my grandpa, or this is how I um, felt his presence, everything that he uh, gifted me. And so, yeah, I would say that along with my good friend, Andrew, uh, just being able to lay a song down and allow myself to be in whatever emotion I feel when I'm thinking of that person, whether it's sad or happy or thinking of a specific memory with that person kind of determines if the song sounds sad or happy or insightful, which is kind of cool how it always comes out when it's finished. like what we were saying about how music like as that almost language or that instant you don't even need to talk about it and you're like we already have a connection I, I think when you have something so deeply personal sometimes instead of having to talk about it it's there like you know here's what I'm feeling I'm gonna play my feelings for you and and you'll get to have those too and um love the idea of kind of encapsulating a memory too because I think when we lose people the more time that passes uh, just our memories of people start to fade and dissolve or um, erode with the way that other people are remembering them or the, or the photos or videos we have of them. Or um, So being able to preserve like how you feel about them right now, knowing that your memory won't, may, may evolve, um, you can always come back and hear that and kind of experience those feelings again too or, or listen to them and go, that's not where I'm at now and, and be in a different process a different stage of that grief which i think is cool music's kind of like a time yes. cycle, i guess <laughs> yeah it's really healing it's really healing i feel like being able to make a song about someone just in general is just kind of i don't know it's really cool it's really it's really fun but um yeah it, it was really healing for me being able to write something and kind of pay tribute and let go in a healthy way yeah that's awesome so um what are you working on now with your music or what's coming up next for you what kind of projects do you have even things in the back of your head i'd love to if anything you're ready to share <laughs> yes yeah so i have been in full-fledged writing creative allowing myself to just be free form and I don't want to say, I don't know if careless is the word, but just, I, I suppose, carefree in my writing and 
uh, allowing myself to just exist, I think for a long time, I have been on this journey of, okay, you're going to practice for X amount of hours and you got to learn how to do this and this and this, and you got to, you got to do all the things all the time and there's no breaks and there was a lot of masculine discipline intertwined with music which isn't a bad thing if you're trying to learn things quick and trying to attain skills and like get your chops up but now I'm I feel like I'm integrating a lot of more feminine a feminine way of going about it and allowing myself to just settle down and you have all of these genres that you love you don't have to write this phenomenal Pink Floyd debut album with visuals and have a world tour right off the bat like you know how we all have that kind of which is good to like get excited and visualize and all that but for a long time it's just been overload to where I'm like okay I can chill out and I can allow myself just to breathe for like five seconds. It's okay. You can go out into the country and just exist. Yeah. You know? And so I've been detoxing from a lot of different uh, things that help me open up those doors to be more creative and just to write. And that being like social media, uh, being out in the country, I'm currently nannying a few Osage kids out in the country in Oklahoma and that's really given me a lot of insight as far as just being in the present moment straight up and using heavy forms of exposure therapy in like real time instead of reading about it how to be present it's just like okay you're in it this is you right now this is what we're doing and so being able to practice those things day to day has unleashed and unlocked a little a little creative space for me where I'm at right now. And so I have been just creating as of late and writing music. I'm doing a little bit of shows here and there, but really nothing crazy where I'm like doing tour after tour or show or virtual stuff. I've really taken a break just to allow myself to exist. And it feels really good. I feel like it's long overdue, but divine timing is happening right now. And so I feel like the music and the album and the EP and the songs are going to come when they come. And it's not a form of, I know it's not a form of being too of a perfectionist because I know like there's a difference between being a perfectionist and never like unleashing your music out into the world because it's not good enough or it's not, you're not ready or whatever. But this is like an inner feeling. Like I know when I'm ready and I'm going to allow myself to just create because I never really, there's always been some kind of hidden intention behind it. If I, I'm writing a song, like, yeah, it's to tap into that flow, but it's also to write a kick-ass song and to play it on stage and to like whatever 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 mm -hmm. so uh I suppose I don't want to say nothing but I'm creating behind closed doors I suppose and just not intentionally not posting anything about it and intentionally not uh putting that kind of masculine-esque energy into it like hey check out what I'm doing like it's almost like you're eating the cookie in the cookie jar too fast when you like give it away really quick like that. And so, yeah, uh, yeah, I've just been doing a lot of creating behind closed doors to sum all of that up. I've just been jamming in the country. <laughs> oh, I think that's amazing. And I think yeah. a lot of people do that and feel like it's not valid sometimes like, oh, you know, it's not this like, like you were saying, it's not something I can just share online or maybe I don't want to share it because it's not it doesn't belong to just me anymore it's still I want to you know work on it on my own before I give it to everybody else or open it up to their opinions and, and feedback and influence um yeah that's I think it's important and I think uh I don't know we glorify that overproduction and that you're sharing everything you know everybody's seeing glimpse of your yes. of your work but 
it's worth celebrating and you know i think also there's something really great about um just putting our own practicing being gentle practicing doing things slow like doing everything with with intention especially as you're saying you know these kind of more masculine or um i don't like results driven <laughs> mindsets we get yes. especially when a lot of teachers or collaborators are men in these different things and you get these other people's ideas and you don't get to develop your own um i don't know your own voice in all of it i think you have to kind of like you yeah. have to detox from all of that right like okay what am i without mm -hmm. all those other layers and influences what does my music sound like or what does my process look like yes absolutely i always feel rushed to like everyone's doing this all my homies are over here and everyone's killing it and I gotta like be along for the ride and so therefore I gotta it's just exhausting it's really exhausting and I didn't realize how addicted I was to that that feeling and so doing this form of like dopamine detox and allowing myself to be like okay this is gonna hurt but I need to do this number and just like chill out for a second like it's always going to be there no one's forgetting about you like all of a sudden you're off the socials for like a week and it feels like you know you don't exist anymore it's like okay there's something to that i should probably do this a little longer mm -hmm. so yeah definitely okay i'd love to know a little off topic from music but i'm also living in the country um and kind of uh weaning myself off of that city life and the fast pace and different things what are what are some of your favorite country activities or like just moments that you're having um living living out in in a more rural area yeah so nature for sure also like this is something i i think is cool is like um well it's kind of cool and creepy but you like go in the bathroom and there's like a spider like on the ledge of your shower and it's just like creeping along and it's just living its little spider life and just being like whoa and tapping it. just like checking it out and watching bugs that sounds so nerdy but watching bugs is fun there's pre there was a little baby prey mantis in my bed like a few weeks ago <laughs> and it was like baby enough to where it wasn't like doing this and it hurts i don't know if that really does it hurts for like a gold prey mantis but regardless it was like trying to do you just like watch bugs and tap into just like looking at all the details of nature and flowers and plants and taking nature walks with the kids. I downloaded this app where you take a picture of a plant and you can figure out like what kind of plant it is, yeah. and its background, if it's safe to eat and what it was used for and uh, learning more about my environment and being tapped into the different foods that I'm eating, the land I'm living on, and uh, the reservation that I'm on right now is Osage, and I'm Comanche and Oto, and so there's a lot of Osage, uh, there's a lot of Osage people and kin that are around the area, and the family that I'm in is Osage, so it's a lot of stepping into their world and how they view life and just how they go about their day to day. I think my favorite thing out of everything though is uh there's like this post office down the street and it's the post office that everybody goes to because there's like one PO box for like a few of the zip codes around the surrounding towns mm -hmm. and it's always unlocked and it's got this chamber sounding lever in the post office and there's no one in there so like during the evening time like during the day it's popping i mean like for a small town like there's people coming in and out you know getting their mail but after like around seven or eight o'clock i'll go in there with my guitar and just jam and sing and you can be as loud as you want because the family that I'm with, like, know the police officers that work there. And so if anything, they'll, like, have my trouble. back. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, so low-key. It's not, it's crazy. And so out of everything, being in a small town, you know, looking at bugs is cool and nature walks is cool. But going to that post office in the evening time and just rip my guitar out and 
jamming is like top notch one of my favorite things <laughs> that's yeah. awesome I love that the post office jams and like I yes. uh <laughs> there's a what is it there's like a I'm, I'm just thinking if like who will ever listen to this or if I'll, <laughs> this person will ever hear me talking about them there's a, a kid like probably oh I don't know he's high school maybe he's out of high school by now that works at a, a business in the small town I'm living in and I've walked by that business I'll do like late night walks just to like get out of the house and move and do things and I'll walk by this business and he's the only one on shift at this business and I'll hear him just like singing and rocking out and like the music's blasting and it's so funny to me because in these small towns and then these like country environments we constantly have privacy and are alone and can explore these spaces but also there's always someone listening <laughs> it's this sort of double-edged yes sort of like like you can do anything you want because it's just you but also somebody's gonna walk up and like know all your business instantly also like, yes <laughs> I yes wonder if there are people who are like oh it's that that person like singing in the post office again <laughs> yes yes like, yeah. you build like this this humility that you can't get in like a big city it's yeah. just like everyone knows your business instantly or whatever it's like you get to know people really quick it's like you can't be fake in a small town so it's chill yeah it's kind of yeah. instant family for better or for worse i guess like everybody's in your business and i don't know there's like immediately mm -hmm. drama but also there's a support system built in and <laughs> yes fun. yes that's awesome okay the last thing i think i want to ask just to kind of wrap this up it's been so great to talk to you and have this conversation um i think the the last piece is where where are we going to see you in the future and no pressure on this because i know you're saying like everything's just coming and going but like if you have a big like ah one day i'll do this it could be any time in life but yes <laughs> yeah what's yes what's so i have so many things i want to do <laughs> i think that to we'll be here for an extra hour if i just like <laughs> whip out my bucket what's list the but biggest one i guess that you're comfortable sharing i know not all of our mm, dreams are for public yeah. consumption like sometimes you're like people don't need to know this yet i'm just going to surprise them all but what's your like big yeah, so <laughs> dream you're comfortable i with? I think that it would be really cool to compose a movie with Hans Zimmer. I've always wanted to do that. And I'm tapping into score, score production and score composing. And it, it comes really naturally and I love it. And so I've always wanted to work on some kind of major feature film whether it's with Fun Zimmer or someone someone else that's amazing, or I could just do the whole damn thing. That would be cool too. Um, F around, find out, but that would be so awesome. I think that's one of my, my goals. However, that pans out. Usually I'll have like something in my head, like, oh, that's cool. I want to do that. And it happens, but in a way that I never thought it would. And it's totally different. So, but yeah, I would say that and being able to jam with all kinds of different uh, artists and genres. So composing music to where I'm able to dip into whatever genre I feel like and be able to kill it with whoever I want to, but that's going to take a lot of like work both on like discipline and being able to like free your mind and so integrating the two but being able to just say hey uh miss sago let's do something and he'd be totally down like yeah. i want to be on that level so being able to just reach out to uh, some of my inspirations and um different artists that i really look up to being able to just jam with them whether we release anything or we just jam and kick it and we're homies like that is the ultimate goal have my have my cell phone like contacts just be filled with dope musicians that i can just facetime and whatever anytime that is that is the goal so that's what i would say that's amazing. I love that. Yeah, I I think collaboration is one of the greatest things that can come out of this musical process and building a community. Um, so yes. Yeah. 
Thank you so much to Olivia Komachi for joining me today. You can find Liv's work under Liv the Artist on Spotify, on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube, and soon to be coming to Twitch. Um, and all of these links are available in the show notes. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to engage with the Earth Noise podcast further, you can find Earth Noise on Instagram at Earth Noise Cast and on Patreon. All of the support from Patreon goes towards bringing new guests and refining the production value of this podcast. You can connect with me, the host, on Instagram at Kelsey underscore Georgeson. That's George S-E-N. Or you can explore my online piano classes and workshops at KelseyGeorgeson.com. Spelled the same, just the website. You can find all of these links and other resources in the show notes. If you loved this podcast, please leave a review or even more powerfully, recommend this to a friend. All of the music used in this podcast is shared with permission of the artist or is public domain available under a Creative Commons license or has been licensed and approved for use by BMI. I would like to thank Anthony Rideout for editing the video content and for all of his contributions to this podcast. Thank you for listening to this episode of Earth Noise.